Hello, I'm Vijendra and welcome to my channel. Please sit down. Today I am addressing you with a relatively a funny thing actually. Uh, originally this uh, class was planned for my social media students. You must be knowing that I'm a teacher at the University of Delhi and so uh, I teach social media there and this particular class was for them but it is uh, it just turned out that probably the public in general might be interested in it and that's why I'm here. Why I'm saying that you might be interested in it? It is because of this. I'm sure you must have found it funny because I am talking about memes on myself. But that's not really the, the point here. The point is we are analyzing meme as the media product. Comedy I always found it's a very difficult business. In fact, it's a very serious business. It's not easy to make people laugh. And uh, memes nowadays are one such thing, which is uh, quite a part of the popular culture these days. For any media student, that's why it is important to analyze this particular phenomena of memes so that one understands that why exactly memes are made, why uh, memes are um, uh, so popular these days. As a teacher, as a researcher, you need to look at the history of it and you might be really uh, surprised to know that the word meme is not that new. M-E-M-E -M -E as we know it, the original uh, uh, first mention of the word meme was well before even the internet came. It was mentioned in 1945. Nineteen forty-five, right? By a, a American engineer called Whenever Bush. Though exactly it was not meme, the word used was memex, m e m e x, and this particular tool, memex, which Whenever Bush mentioned in uh, his uh, article, as we may think, as we may think, nineteen forty-five, and what was this? Memex. Memex was actually a theoretical machine, a theoretical machine in which it was presumed at that time because there was no digital uh, revolution. It was presumed that all data, for example, a library, can be converted into microfilms. And this particular machine, which will be a des desktop size machine, all these text in the microfilm form can be called, studied, and referred. Sound familiar, isn't it? It is actually. Uh, in my own uh, paper, and not just my own paper, that may, at many places, this particular idea of memex, this particular mem machine memex, is credited with what we no now call hypertext. The very nature of hypertext is presumed to be taken from this idea of memex in 1945 whenever Bush proposed it. But it was not necessarily the same memes we are talking about, but even the same memes we are talking about, memes as we all know, are the small pictures, the piece of pictures in which the public in general put in their dialogues to express their opinion, their satire, their fun. Even that kind of meme in the word MEME -E or MEMES was used in 1976. Most of you must, might not have even born at that time, though I did actually. So 1976, the Richard Dawking used this particular word meme and it is interesting that in what context he used it. And that's why it become very relevant today. Meme was used in terms of opposite to genes. Genes, as you all know, all DNA carry that gene. And gene has this wonderful capacity of self-replication. Now again, it sounds familiar, familiar, isn't it? That's what meme is. Meme is that one a, med, one a particular media product is launched in terms of a movie, in terms of uh, 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 any uh, photograph or 
or any other media product. And this particular media product is then replicated by public in general, not necessarily with the authority or the copyright thing with that particular original pro production of the creative, but instead the entire public can use and generally use it to express their opinion, their anger, their fun, their satire, their jokes. And that's why this particular media product is important because this particular media product, unlike other propriety media products, is a public driven product. Is part of the popular culture, as I said. It is also important that, like any satire, like any uh, any kind of uh, uh, disgruntled, any kind of uh, uh, harassed public product, it is also a collective coping mechanism. Like I always, I've been saying in the class that we need to analyze this particular product, for that matter, any media product, in the sociological context. Why do we use memes? We use memes because, in the same way as we use satire, it is something which the public, which is, for whatever reason, has got a, a, a several uh, issues with the authorities, several issues with the whatever system in place, and they cannot express their anger and frustration. They end up coming up with jokes, they end up coming up, coming up with satire, and they, nowadays, they end up coming up with memes. So memes effectively are a reaction of somewhat frustrated lot. That's been the sociology of joke, that's been the sociology of memes. And that's why it's amusing to some extent when I look at these memes. Here, one, I'm, um, I'm amused, I am uh, somewhat worried also, because I myself said that it is the, uh, the public in general who is harassed, will use these soft satire jokes, memes against the authority. And I, as a poor teacher, never ever considered that I'll be considered a part, part of the authority where people will make meme on me. But it's, it's been a definitely a privilege to uh, be a content of, uh, be, be a subject matter of memes. But look at these, this particular A, which is a template for the meme. It is basically inviting public to come, let's make fun of this person or this situation we are in. So this is this was all I wanted to talk about. I, I I expect I hope that my students and uh, my viewers will find it interesting that we can look at any media product, any media product, be it videos, be it shorts, be it memes, from the perspective of the sociology, from the perspective of a media product to be analyzed, and not just uh, an entertainment product. That's it for today. I hope you liked it.